Crafting a well-polished demo is essential for gathering interest in your game as well as reaching for those all so wonderful wish lists. So I've set myself a timeline for three weeks to get my demo done. I wanted to share my progress with you for the first week as well as emphasize the importance of marketing your game through demos and seeking such valuable feedback from your community. Before we dive into the events of this week, let's discuss why releasing a demo is a vital part of marketing your game. A demo serves as a teaser, giving the player a taste of what your game has to offer. It's an excellent opportunity to generate interest and build a community around your project, setting the stage for a successful release. If you check out Chris Zukowski's howtomarketagame.com, he goes over how important it is to get a demo out there early. Now this is advice I should have taken and run with. I think maybe I was just too nervous to put my game out there for everyone to see. I wanted to finish it completely and then slice out a little bit of that game to send to everybody. But I think it's a better idea to focus on a solid 15 to 20 minute section of my game specifically, more or less depending on your game, before you even finish anything else. And get it out there so you can get feedback, the vital, vital feedback that will help you make your game a success. In exciting news, I've also signed up for Steam Next Fest in February. It's a fantastic platform for showcasing your game to a wider audience. And the best part about Steam Next Fest is it is an immediate source for wish lists. They don't have to click from a YouTube video, for instance, into Steam and then go wishlist your game. Steam Next Fest is all right there. All I gotta do is push that little button. After the festival, I'm gonna be aiming to release shortly after. So I'm really excited to get my demo out and get your guys' feedback. One of the first things I did to prepare for making my demo was to write down all the things I thought were necessary to be in it in permanent marker on my whiteboard. Son of a... So I scrapped that idea and did it online instead. The first thing I did was work on a very crucial aspect of my game, the storytelling, or more so, the humor behind it. I created a cutscene to set the stage for our hero's journey, featuring an interaction between the knight and the lich, our evil big bad guy. I created this scene to sort of set the fact that these two are going to be bickering with each other. They have some sort of history that is unknown to the player, and this banter kind of alludes to that. Now to create this cutscene, I dove into Unity's timeline, a powerful tool if you haven't used it, for designing cinematic sequences in games. It allows you to synchronize events, dialogues, character animations, and it'll also let you dive into each one of those and adjust them individually. A great hook can captivate players and make them more invested in your game, and mine just happens to be this sort sort of back and forth between the main character and the main villain. I think it's a crucial step towards making my game be what I want it to be. Follow through on what I envision it to turn out like. The next thing I focused on this week was enhancing the gameplay experience. I added checkpoints to certain parts of each level to improve player progression as they work through a level and to prevent frustration. No one wants to replay the same section over and over again just because you fell into some spikes. Now, characters have to fully die before they're forced to restart the level. But if you hit something that was normally an instant death, like a spike trap, or a slam trap, or a spinning blade trap, you'd have to start the whole game from the beginning. Again, falling through the hole and going. Now when you die, you just instantly transport to the last checkpoint you were at and go from there. And speaking of progression, if you don't want to miss out on any of my videos, why don't you subscribe below? And I think this next part that I add is really what's going to separate my 2D action platformer, a very, very hard game type and genre to market, from others in the field. That lich from the cutscene before, he's going to project a ghostly head that will follow the player around and taunt them. It's going to add some interaction, some humor, it's going to keep the player invested, and hopefully when they turn it off, maybe just a little bit memorable. And the final thing I was able to add this week was some polish, especially on the mechanics. Fine-tuning combat, making it more responsive and enjoyable for players. I improved the shield animation, it was, was kind of like squashing and stretching a little bit. I enhanced the knockback effect, which is a new mechanic that I'm trying to get right and I think it feels a lot better. And I added a bunch of trap mechanics for extra depth and excitement. I think these traps are going to go a long way towards adding a new level of depth to each well, level and biome. There was something missing about when the player would kill an enemy and then the level would just be dead. Having a blade trap constantly spinning or these big slam traps smashing the ground and rocks flying everywhere will keep the level feeling alive, feeling dangerous. These refinements are essential to ensure that players have a smooth and satisfying experience with the game. After all, a well-polished game is more likely to leave a lasting impression and 
hey, receive positive feedback. So I'm only a few weeks away from finishing the demo for It Is A Good Night To Die. I've covered some important reasons why you should make a demo and how it can help market your game, and I'm hoping to create some anticipation and build a community around my project. And hopefully you can see this when it's all said and done and do the same. Hey, and if my game looks interesting and you want to support me, why don't you click on the link below and go wishlist It Is A Good Night To Die. Thanks. You'll be able to play the demo soon. And lastly, your feedback is amazing. And I love reading any comments you guys have. And I'd love to hear any ideas you have for future videos or anything you want me to dive into more that you saw here. Thanks for watching. Take care.